Brian, uh, just curious how involved you're getting with uh, the defense giving up those uh, that many yards through the air. How much involvement do you have? How goes the debrief of, hey, we can't let that happen again? Yeah, we meet um, you know, every day, certainly meet on Sunday after the game and, and go through and, like you said, uh, go through every every position group and, and each player and, and talk about their performance and then um, you know, finish it up and talk about, you know, some things uh, schematically, talk about uh, areas of improvement, you know, the whole thing. And um, so we're, we're in regular conversation. Obviously, my attention and most of my time goes towards the offense, but um, certainly in constant com communication with those guys and making sure we're all on the same page. Anything in particular you want to change? Well, I mean, the glaring issue was the the big plays. Um, and one of the things about this defense is that it's designed to avoid big plays. So, um, you know, if we can get back to that, uh, and, and that's really the idea of this defense is to, you know, make you work your way down the field. So, um, yeah, there was a few things there that we got to get fixed. Um, I'd rather not get into too many details at this point. But, yeah, we, get, we have to get a couple of things changed. Thanks. Yep. All right, next up, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Dan. Hey, Ryan. You know, last year you guys basically kind of rolled through the regular season and didn't have a ton of, you know, close games. Does it feel different this year at all, you know, when you're having an issue with the defense in terms of this team needing to overcome a little bit more? Yeah, I think a little bit. There's, there's a lot at play here uh, with everything that's going on. So, yeah, it's very, very different. But uh, the, the funny thing is there's such a contrast because there's – there's some guys playing really at a high level on our team. And so uh, I really think after four games, you know, in a body of work, uh, we can do a great job this week of, of identifying the issues that are kind of holding us back from pulling away from teams, address them and, and get better right here. Um, you know, I was hoping that going into the Maryland game was the same way, you know, we had that week off. And so now, um, you know, we have this Indiana game on film. So now we got to really spend a bunch of time and make sure that everything we're doing uh, is towards getting better. And, and I think that's what good teams can do. But there's a lot of good things going on, and I don't think we're that far away. And you've talked a lot about how you got need to close out the second halves better. I'm curious, as you you know go into these next couple games, if you get into a situation where the team is doing really well and you have a big lead, does that need make you more convinced to want to keep your starters in and make sure you can finish out strong, or would it make you want to get those backups in the game? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I think anytime you can get your guys reps, uh, it, it makes us stronger. So you definitely want to get those guys in there, but you can't put anything at risk. And this year, um, like you mentioned earlier, there's just so many crazy things that have gone on. So I've uh, been a little bit more hesitant there and uh, for good reason, uh, because, you know, we, we didn't really close the teams out the last couple of weeks that we like we wanted to. Um, but I think that's also part of our team understanding that we're going to play for four quarters, you know, even when we're up big at halftime. And uh, we just got to keep hammering that home. And uh, it was good to see us come out in the second half uh, and start with a drive to, to, to um, you know, score and go up 35 to seven. Uh, but then we got to sustain throughout the, the entire 60 minutes. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. All right, we'll go next to Nathan Baird from cleveland.com. Nathan. Hey, Ryan. Uh, the metrics say the defensive front is creating a lot of pressure. Um, but do they? And you talked about that last week, too, and so did some of the players. But do they need to turn that into more – sacks and hits to create the influence that your defense needs to maybe take some of the pressure off the back end? I mean, I, I think they're getting a lot of hits. I think they're getting a lot of hurries. I think they're getting some knockdowns. Uh, I looked at that this, this week. I'm sure they all want to keep getting sacks and getting production, but uh, they are pushing the pocket and uh, they're, they're getting pretty good push in there. And um, certainly yeah, we all want to do better. We want to get some sacks. We'd love to see that. I mean, that's, that's a huge deal. First drive of the game, you know, we, on that third down, we, we get that sack. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a uh, energy boost for our team. So those guys are continually work on, you know, how they can get more sacks and get to them faster. But uh, I think they're doing a decent job of, of putting pressure on the quarterback for sure. And you mentioned, uh, I talked to you last week about, um, I guess something you were just talking to, to Dan about, about the, how you can kind of gain some trust in, in younger guys, even though it has to, I guess, come through practice since you're not getting the game reps. Are you, almost at a point where you have to maybe make more of a leap of faith with, with some of the younger guys. And how tough is that for a coach when sometimes it isn't, the trust isn't necessarily proven in front of you, but also there may be guys who are playing who are, who are losing some trust. Yeah. I mean, anytime you're, you're one of these situations, you know, you kind of hold your breath, but um, we go off what we see in practice when guys are practicing really well, 
uh, we believe in what we see. And so there's an opportunity for guys to go out there and practice and, and uh, practice their tail off and, and prove that they deserve playing time. And when they do, we will. And we've shown that. We play young guys who are playing freshmen now. Uh, so that's why practice is so important to keep building that depth. But um, certainly if we don't have those non-conference games or a body of work behind it where those guys have these reps, there is a little bit of an unknown. And especially in a big game like that, you are a little bit more hesitant to put them in. All right, we'll go next to Dave Biddle from 247. Dave. Thanks, Mike. Hi, Ryan. I know you don't want to get too specific about the defense, but as you reviewed the film and as your defensive coaches reviewed the film, what is the biggest issue on defense regarding the big plays? Is it scheme, personnel, something else? Yeah, but, hey, you know, that was kind of what we talked about after the game, and, and I think it's a little bit of, of all three. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, in all three of those areas, we can improve, and we will. Um, you know, we talked about it, and, and we have a plan for that. So um, it starts with practice today. we got to go out there and, and get some of those things fixed and make sure that uh, we're not giving up big plays. We're forcing teams to go down the field, and that's the number one thing in this defense is, is to avoid the big plays. So it starts with that. Uh, regrouping a little bit that way and then looking to see you know if, if there's other combinations back there that work better I also want to ask you about replay this is another thing you touched on after the game um, obviously it's not supposed to be your responsibility for replay they're supposed to buzz down on any questionable call but the replay officials seem to be a little bit asleep at the wheel on Saturday there was a fumble that you guys recovered that seemed to be a clear fumble that wasn't reviewed there was a couple other maybe questionable calls um have you reassessed your plan in that regard? Again, it's not, it shouldn't be your responsibility, but maybe having like a grad assistant who's in charge of telling you, hey, we got to call a timeout here. We got to challenge this, something like that. Yeah, I, I talk to Kevin all the time, but the, the hard thing is when there's no replay on the board, there's nothing to go off of. So like in that moment there, I was talking to the, to the official on our sideline and just saying, you know, I, I can't see it on the board. Kevin didn't have a view of it either. It wasn't being replayed at that time. Um, and so, um, you know, he said they were reviewing it. He was on the phone with the guy. He said he's looking at it. And I said, do I need to, to challenge it? He said, no, nah. he looked at it and he said um, that he's not going to, he's not going to buzz it. And so uh, at that moment, there was nothing else I could go off of based on what I saw in live, uh, you know, in, in real time. So uh, I guess I could have called the timeout at that, at that moment, but uh, it happened so quickly and didn't have a view of it on, on the screen. But typically what we do is, uh, you know, Kevin, uh, we'll, we'll be able to give me some information on what he sees up there. And then obviously if, if we see it up on the, the board in the stadium, then that gives us a point of view to, to help make a decision. Thanks coach. Yep. All right. We'll go next to Austin Ward, Letterman row, Austin. Uh, Ryan, can you describe maybe what uh, conversations or film study were like with Justin? You guys sat down and looked at maybe what, what happened on those interceptions? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was, um, is his worst critic. Uh, he's really hard on himself, and um, and that's what makes him great. You know, he's very, very competitive. And I would just talked about in, in some of those situations, not forcing the action, not trying to do too much with it. And uh, in a game like that, uh, we knew that there was going to be big plays. We also knew that they were going to get home on some things. And uh, you can't make bad play wor bad plays worse. And and that did happen a little bit in the game. And and he knows it. And um, certainly could have done a better job in protection certainly could have put him into some better some better spots coaching wise um, and then he also could have made some some better decisions just throwing the ball away and ditching it but that that's hard you know he's so competitive and then he also made a bunch of plays with his feet as well and so that, that's hard for him to let go sometimes but but that's part of playing quarterback and uh, and I know that he's looking to get better in that area is it is it possible I don't know if this will make sense that everything seemingly comes so easily to him and he's not had a lot of games that were I don't know you know, learning lessons or opportunities, at least not in terms of interceptions or, you know, games that he might not be thrilled about. Does he, is there value in having something like that for him to go through like a little bit more adversity? Not that he hasn't had none in his career, but just this, this example. Yeah, I would say as a, as a team and as the head coach, uh, we do not want this to happen. Uh, but if, if we're talking about him individually and his development and his growth, adversity is a very, very good thing. Uh, when you look back on the great quarterbacks, uh, when, it, when it comes really easy to them and, and they just roll through with everything and then the minute they hit adversity, then it, the things get hard. Anytime you go through some adversity along the way, uh, it really helps and, uh, in his development. But uh, certainly don't want to see any more of those. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. All right. We'll go next to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Doug. Hey, Ryan. I'm, I'm going to follow up on what Austin asked because I, just, I think these are like 
among the most fascinating conversations in football is the idea of a, a playmaking quarterback like this. And we've talked about it with you so much because we know the plays he can make, right? That's the thing. You know what's there. When you and Justin are, are going through film like that, like is how much of a debate is it? Is he explaining sometimes, hey, this is what I was thinking. I'm thinking – well, if I can do this and I can get out of here and I can make this great, I, I'm just so fascinated by what those actual conversations are like between you two. Yeah. I mean, um, we talk about it a lot. Uh, we even talked about it going into the game, watching the Thursday night game between Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray, because that, that's really part of their games. When you look at so much of their passes on that Thursday night game, they were, they were extending a bunch. And, um, and that's, that's part of Justin's game. And I think when you look at some of the guys in that league right now, a lot of them have that ability. And it's just decision making and discernment and, and figuring out the down and distance and how close uh, the defenders are to them, uh, where they are in terms of the route progression. There's, there's like you said, there's so many dynamics you can't really put it into and quantify uh, every decision. But uh, we talk through it, like you said, and you know, figure out you know early on if if we're stepping up and there's an escape hatch, what's the plan? Is it just to tuck it and run, or is it to step up into that escape hatch, two hands on the ball, eyes downfield, give the receivers a little bit longer time to get open? Uh, when you get flush from the pocket, you escape to the side. It's a whole different story. Uh, when you're when you're in the pocket and someone comes loose, you know, can you slide? I mean, there's all these different scenarios that come up. Uh, but in the end, you just kind of have to trust your instinct on it and always have a plan for where to throw the ball away. And when you – and this applies to, I guess, everything with Justin. You're a person who's sort of dedicated your life in a lot of ways to quarterback play. And when you have a student like Justin Fields with all of his ability – What's it like as you, I'm sure over the past, the course of the past two years, you see the way the conversations deepen and develop and the way you guys talk about stuff now isn't the way you talked about stuff when he got here. Just like, what's that like for the two of you as you, you both, your conversations, I'm sure get more interesting. Yeah, it, it is. It's rewarding. Um, that's, that's one of the best parts of, of coaching quarterbacks is when you start to see that development and that growth and, um, you know, they understand that they have an opinion. You know, it's like, what do you like? Early on, they like everything. Well, they, they don't like anything. You don't even know what you're talking about. You know, and then, and then as they get older, they realize, you know, they have they have scars, they have warts, they they figure out, you know, things and plays that they don't like. Maybe they don't see it well. Uh, maybe they just don't have a good feel for that play. W whatever those reasons are, they have an opinion. And, and I really like their opinion because that, that helps me. I mean, if they like a play and they have confidence in that play, let's call that one because, uh, you know, the coaching staff may like it, but if the quarterback likes it, then it's probably going to work. Uh, so that, that give and take. When they're young, you know, they, they say they like everything. You know, they, their opinion really doesn't matter as much. Um, but but he's, he's got enough, you know, snaps under his belt, again, that uh, when he gives his opinion, you know, we all listen. Thank you, Ryan. Yep. All right, we'll go next to Kyle Rowland from the Toledo Blade. Kyle. Kyle. Hey, Ryan, Ohio State's got a pretty robust, active uh, parents association. Uh, just curious, how important do you think that's been for the parents and the players this year, obviously, with the circumstances and just having someone to lean on more than just coaches? Well, it's been hard, I think, for our players. They, they've, they've really not been around their families for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, I think being Thanksgiving week, uh, it's really hard on all the families and, and, and these young men. Uh, but the, the other side of it is they've sacrificed so much to get to this point. Um, and so it, it's, it's kind of that, that balancing act, you know, do, do you, do you go see your family on Thanksgiving and, and risk being exposed to this virus, which is everywhere right now, or, um, do you, do you kind of hang in here and, and do a, a meal, uh, in the facility and, and kind of, um, you know, decide to, to stay by yourself. And, and, and we've decided that we're going to do that. Um, we are certainly not telling parents that they, they can't see their sons, but, uh, it's just more risk. And again, to look these guys in the eye after everything they've been through, uh, they've sacrificed so much. It, me it needs to it needs to matter. And uh, so that's that's kind of where we're at with Thanksgiving week because it's uh, it's you know it's it's an important week for for everybody, and not being around their family um, is not easy. And so I, I think that uh, our families have been unbelievable. I think the communication has been good, but I think they miss their sons. And you know it's during this week it's not easy for them, but I know their support. Uh, really matters. They sent some videos last Friday night before the game, which was great. I know that cheered up the guys. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's been really good um, in terms of the communication and the support that we felt from our parents' organization. 
you mentioned after the game about just the difficulty and how people don't realize, you know, what all they've sacrificed. I mean, they're getting tested every day. A lot of these guys haven't been home for, you know, a long, long time. Um, how, um, totally went blank now. Um, I don't know. I, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> well, no, but, but, I, but I think to your point, what, what you're saying is that, you know, people don't realize the sacrifices they make and they're being so isolated and then really what is the reward for, for what they're doing? You know, and it's being part of a family and a brotherhood uh, that's trying to do something special, but they're not playing in front of a hundred thousand people. They're, they're not seeing their family after the game. They're not seeing their friends. They're not getting that instant feedback. And that matters. It just does. And uh, it's the same for both teams. It's the same for everybody in the country. So it's not different, but, but does it make it easier? And I remember challenge. I remember what I was going to ask. Sorry. Have you actively, I know you did the dodgeball game when the game got canceled in Maryland. Um, Obviously like practice is serious and all of this is serious. You've got these huge goals. Have you purposely done some things to try to lighten the mood this year because you know how much they're going through? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, usually in practice or uh, in certain moments when it usually needs to be very, very serious and focused, uh, we, we've, we've backed off on that because they don't have that time. They're, they're in their room. So they need that interaction with the coaches and their players, maybe even during practice to laugh and have fun. Uh, because if this isn't the best part of their day and if they're not having fun when they come in the building, uh, the product's not going to be very good. So, uh, yeah, we, we've tried to do as many things as we can so that they really love being here when they're here. Thanks a lot. Yep. Okay, next we'll go to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hi, Ryan. Uh, the defensive issues the last two games have brought back memories for a lot of people about 2018. When you see where your defense is now compared to what what happened two years ago, how apt a comparison is that? I think the, the issues here were really all in the past game, and they're correctable. Um, it's not like we can't correct them. Um, maybe the ones a couple of years ago were a combination of run game and pass game. Um, and so uh, I know that we can correct them. Uh, I know we have the right scheme. Now we just have to go do it. And in terms of, of the safety position, you know, Jordan Fuller was, was probably underappreciated last year because he was so reliable and, and he honestly wasn't needed that much because your defense was so good overall. How would you assess the play of, of Marcus at, at that position? And is that a, something you would look at in terms of possible personnel change? Yeah, I mean, uh, Jordan was, was was really good. I mean, you saw what he did last night. He was just reliable. He uh, tackled well. He got everybody lined up. And like you said, he was uh, underappreciated probably a little bit when he was here. Um, but but that, that position for us is somebody that's very, very important. And uh, he's the one that has got to keep it all in front of him. And um, he's in charge back there. And, uh, yeah, Marcus has had some some good moments. He's also been a little inconsistent. So, um, you know, that's Coach Combs. And he are going to work on that this week, address some of the things that, uh, he needs to get better at, and and we'll we'll look at a bunch of different combinations this week to see what's what's best in, in getting this thing fixed. Thanks, Ryan. Yep. We'll go next to Tim May from Letter Monroe. Tim. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, Ryan. I just wanted to ask you two, a two part question. Number one, why is it that defenses? Do you think, if you look around the country, have had some of these moments? You know what I mean, or halves? I mean, you know, Clemson you know, right on down the line, have had these kind of moments. And then number two, you have the ability in practice to turn what I think is a fire hose on your defense, meaning with your high-powered uh, passing offense, one of the great quarterbacks in the country and great receivers. How often do you do that, and would you do that more in a week like this? Uh, we'll, we'll keep the routine the routine. Uh, we'll, we'll continue to have good, good on good work. Um, and, and it is good. It's good to have good on good work. You know, sometimes – Teams run different schemes and they run different combinations of things, um, yeah. you know, and so sometimes those, those type of things happen. Uh, but so we probably won't change all that much, uh, but it is good to have good on good work during the week for sure. And, and what is it about, about defense you think this year that's kind of lagged a little bit across the country? What, what, what can, I mean, some things look obvious, but just from your vantage point, I wanted to get it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I do think like if you're home, um, having a hundred and, 10,000 people or whatever it is screaming and yelling on third down uh, and on a pick six and, and those type of things. Uh, it, it does. It gives you energy. It gives you momentum. You know, I think back in the Penn state game two years ago, there's also, there's uh, you know, a couple false starts because they can't even hear the cadence and yeah. they're hyping up the crowd and the crowd's going crazy. And 
that's not that's not here this year. Now that's not an excuse. It's just it's just not here. Um, I don't know if that plays into it or not, uh, because at the end of the day, it's just about a matter of executing. And um, you know, I thought we executed well in the first half, uh, other than you know really a couple plays. And then you know in the second half, we 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 made some mistakes that we've got to get fixed. So uh, I don't know if I have a great answer for why that is. Um, you know, I know that maybe early on it was because there wasn't the normal spring practice and wasn't the normal preseason camp where typically you get a little bit more tackling and those type of things in. Um, but, but now we're starting to get into, you know, game five and six. So I don't think it should matter as, all, as much. Thanks, man. Yep. All right. We'll go next to Bill Landis from the athletic bill. Hey, Ryan, uh, this goes back to what uh, I think Doug was asking you earlier, but, but you're an aggressive play caller. I think Justin's a pretty aggressive quarterback and you have two pretty explosive receivers and, and Chris and, and Garrett. I think it's obvious why you'd want to work shots down the field, but, but how often do you and Justin have to talk about, I don't know if reining that in is the right word or just sort of taking what's given to you if defenses are going to be really aggressive up front and kind of soft on the back end. Yeah. I mean, that's always part of the conversation is knowing when to take your shots and when to, when to check the ball down. And that's, that's the art of playing quarterback is, is knowing and decision-making. And uh, Justin's been unbelievable with that. And, and I know he will be moving forward. So uh, it's, it's always part of the conversation week in and week out. And on the defensive side, when you brought Kerry in, you said, you know, that the defense is a defense, but we'd like to see Kerry diversify some things a little bit. Um, how has that gone? Do you think you guys have diversified enough with your coverages on the back end? I mean, I, I like what we're doing. Um, I think that we have the right stuff in. Um, just have to execute a little better. And, um, and if we do that, I think we're going to be in good shape. Um, you know, I, I'm not really – you know, I don't think there's been anything schematically where you look at it and you're like, well, that's that's not good. I mean, again, we're up 35 to seven uh, with a defense that's, you know, designed to avoid big plays and we had too many big plays. Um, so I think schematically we're right where we need to be. Uh, we just need to execute better. We'll go next to Tony Gurdman, Buckeye Scoop. Tony. I'll apologize a bit for this question. I was going through it. In- Googling to see if you'd ever thrown three interceptions in a game. I came across the UMass game, I think your second start in 1999, where you threw four. And I'm just wondering your thought process, your emotions, and and after that game, the days after, and uh, and if you've relayed some of those instances to your own players. I think I actually threw five against Northwestern once. And Don and Don Brown was Don Brown was the head coach for North Northeastern at the time. You know, you don't forget those games. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where um, when, when you're being aggressive and you're a throwing offense, uh, when, when something like that happens, you have to play your way through it. What you, can, what you can't do is all of a sudden start to get tight. Um, and we just can't do that here. I mean, we're always go. And, um, and so you can tell even early on, I mean, we were going at them. And we, you know, a couple passes early on, we come right out in the second series, throw it again. We throw the interception, we come back out, we're, th- you know, we're throwing. And, and you have to work through those things. That's kind of really the first time Justin's had to do that. And that's the only way that I know how to do it is you just keep playing through it. Uh, that's like a, uh, you know, a three-point shooter in basketball who's, you know, in, in a little bit of a slump. You just got to shoot your way through it. Same thing in, in baseball. And so when those moments happen, you just have to erase what just happened and play through it. And, um, and, and that, that's not easy. Because in your mind, you start to think of all the consequences of what you just did. And, and that's um, that you have to reboot. And, you know, I remember I had those games as well. But you learn from them and you move on. Thank you. Yeah. We've got time for a couple more. We'll go to Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes, now on Sports Illustrated. Brendan. Hey, Coach. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. Uh, I know you, you kind of touched a little bit on it with, uh, with Kyle's question. But I, I guess just in, in sort of a follow-up there, how has – everything that you've gone through the last couple of months here, maybe enhanced or, or given you a different perspective of uh, celebrating a, a Thanksgiving holiday this year? Well, I'm certainly grateful for uh, my family and everything they've done uh, to support me personally during this time. I have not been around much. Uh, it's been very difficult on them. Uh, it's a major sacrifice. Um, grateful for the players and the, and the coaching staff who have also sacrificed so much to be away from their families. Uh, grateful to uh, be a part of such a great family who was stuck together and worked through a crazy year. Uh, but I'm proud of the way that uh, we've handled ourselves. I'm proud of the way that this team has stuck together. 
that they've worked through and made such great sacrifices. Uh, you look back on the season, there's been just so many things and it was handled with class. I feel like the, the players, the coaches, administration, uh, and just very honored to be, to be the head coach of the Buckeyes. You had mentioned a little bit after the game and, and Coach Hartline tweeted something post game about how proud he was of playing, or I should say of coaching guys that um, frankly have incredibly high expectations externally and, and how difficult it can be to live up to those. First college football playoff rankings are coming out tonight and there's all this outside noise. And I, I guess I'm wondering how much you guys talk with your team about the mental toughness and, and you know, the building blocks of trying to ignore the stuff that's written and said elsewhere because you know the the fear of trying to be perfect is a real thing when you have lofty expectations yeah it is it is but it comes with the territory here not that it's easy it's not it doesn't make it easy just knowing that what you're getting into here but um, when you come to Ohio State I mean the standard is so high and you have to live up to that standard and the one thing I talked to the players about even at dinner the other night when we were all just sitting down is you know on social media there, there there's there's millions of Buckeye fans out there even if there's 200 people on social media that are saying something disparaging about you, that's, that's 200 people. If you put 200 people in the shoe, you wouldn't even notice them. And so you just have to understand that that's hard for a college age uh, kid to understand that and put perspective to what's going on because they live their life so much through social media. Uh, but, but you have to have perspective with it. It's all the way that you approach it. And so, you know, for the guys who go through it, you know, I try to talk to them about that. And uh, you know, I've certainly been through it before too. It's, it's part of being here. And, uh, but again, that doesn't make it easy. And some people who are really hurt the most are your loved ones. You know, I feel like I can take it. So I just worry about my kids and my wife, you know, it's the same thing for these guys too. You know, I think their, their parents hurt so much for them. And that's, that's part of the, that's part of the gig here. And, um, you know, it's just something that you have to work through and have a plan for and have a good support system. Thank you. Yep. All right. We got time for two more. Uh, we'll go to Steven means cleveland.com. Steven. Hey, Ryan, uh, you've been coaching quarterbacks for a long time, and I know every quarterback has their own unique talents and whatnot, but I don't know, in your experience before, Justin, had you coached a quarterback who could literally throw an interception while falling back and getting sacked, but also be the same kid who, while he's stumbling, find a tight end wide open for a first down? Not, no, not, not like him. I mean, he's, like you said, he's strong. He's powerful. He's I mean, he's really athletic. And, uh, and, and that's, that's the give and take. Like you said, there's been so many great things, the scramble for run for a touchdown. There's been extended plays. There's just been so many great plays. And then, and then there was a couple there, but, but I, I know if, if he has those back again, that he's going to make the right decision. Um, he's tremendously talented and now he's acquiring the skill it takes to be a great quarterback. And, and I believe he's the best quarterback in the country. So is the message in all this, maybe just time and place for everything? I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and this was a team that, uh, that just blitzed every snap and then they put a lot of pressure on and it's a learning experience. One of those, again, you put in the Rolodex now and you learn from it. The next time you're ready for it. Thanks. All right. I'm going to, we'll wrap it up with uh, Steve Hellwagon from two, four, seven, Steve. Yeah, coach, uh, <clears throat> you referenced the blitzing and it seemed like your two sacks were products of blitz pressure in some regard. I think Werner cleaned up uh, the second one that Togi, I kind of collapsed the pocket and I think Williamson blitzed on the first one and Cooper got it um, is, and I don't know what percentage you guys blitzed at, but is that something that you guys might consider? And I know there are considerations on the back end, how that impacts your coverage, but uh, is that something you could do to get the quarterbacks, uh, the ball on the quarterback seeing a little faster? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, when you bring pressure and um, you bring one more guy, uh, it, it certainly helps. Uh, but like you said, there's one less guy in coverage. And we, we've recruited to a four down scheme uh, and Larry's done such a great job that we've been able to get a rush from those four down guys uh, for a long time. And that's, that's who we count on. Uh, we have for a long time here. And then that was part of the discussion a couple of years ago uh, when we, when we took a look at this, this defense, we wanted to keep that four down scheme so that we could get a pass rush with the four guys. Um, but we, we also have to be opportunistic with, with blitzing and keeping them off, um, you know, on their heels so that they, you know, they can't just, screw their cleats in the ground and know where we're coming from. Uh, so anytime we can do that to change it up, it's good. I thought when we did blitz, we, we hit home on some things and we can clean up our patterns as well. Other thing, the targeting call, um, they don't make that call. And if Indiana goes down and scores, they could potentially win the game. And you would have had a first down at the two yard line instead. 
And uh, secondly, just player safety. I mean, it impacted the outcome of the game, but he could have been knocked out for the season with that hit. I don't know. Just uh, was that part of your conversation at all yesterday that, you know, guys, you need to really be watching the game here and not miss calls like that. Uh, absolutely. That was, that was the first topic of conversation right there. And without getting into too many details, yeah, I was very, very upset with that. Um, I, I don't, I don't know how that was missed, but um, you know, those guys have a tough job and they're trying to figure all that out. And I know that that part of it, um, you know, the last couple of years has been sensitive, but I, 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 they missed that one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. Come visit us over at BuckeyeGrove.com for all the best Ohio State information on the web.